ago, I was living part-time in Spokane and had opportunities to pad around uh, the Northwest Museum of Arts and Culture. And one exhibit I visited <coughs> often was that one featuring the North American, uh, Northwest American Indian baskets. You've probably seen it too. Uh, the weaving, the line, and forms always draw me in. And posted at this exhibit was a paragraph that has guided my work. And now keep in mind that I'm working under this umbrella theme of interwoven. Here's the quote. One of the remarkable qualities of our American Indian basket collection is its living history, a perspective shared by traditional weavers. But here's the juicy part. A basket never begins with people or the object itself, but rather a place, the spirit, the land, the water, the sky, the animals. So at a basic level, my palette is earth, fire, air, water. And you can see that evidence in the ceramic tile work, in particular. And I'm inspired by the aesthetic and spiritual traditions of uh, American Indian and Japanese culture. Specifically, what draws me in is a deep-seated reverence for nature and careful attention to an appropriation of resources. I admire the inherent inclination to live within nature, a genuine cohabitation. From this perspective, I ask myself what processes and materials can I use that are kind to the planet? I'm inclined to reduce, re reuse, and recycle like all of you, but for me, you know, how does that, uh, how does being considerate to the planet play out in my art? Simultaneously, the work speaks to the fragility of the ecosystem and the beauty of the earth. I think that my expression falls out in the form of diptychs and triptychs and series a lot. I can't escape that. It happens frequently. And I think that that is a method I have of expressing the dualities, ironies, and conundrums inherent to the issues of caring for the planet. I think that these two vessels I've titled Fragile Incrustation, these two, um, illustrates a duality common to my work and what goes on for me is I create work reflecting my raising consciousness about the environment, peace, and social justice. Let me tell you about these pieces. They're very labor intensive. I needed over 50 pounds of porcelain, which isn't the, is, which is, which isn't the hard part, but I rolled out very thin slabs and then cut out hundreds of small rectangles, which I used to build. So when you look inside, you can see the, you know, the articulation of those lines a little bit more. Um, you know, and the vessel itself is something of a symbol for me. You know, Squire uses lemons, Jim Dine uses bathrobes, you know, that kind of thing. And I think the vessel has a lot of metaphoric potential for me. It's sort of the nucleus for a lot of my work. Okay, so after I stacked these hundreds of uh, small porcelain rectangles as, I, as high as I possibly could, for those of you new to clay, Porcelain is not exactly known to be load-bearing. Um, I was taking really big chances. I didn't even know if it would survive the drying, let alone the bisque firing. But surprisingly, they, they survived. Um, and originally, I thought I would stop there. I think, Colleen, when you saw them in their naked state still, and we both liked the way you could catch the light through the holes. And uh, I really tried to maintain those holes. I liked the way that articulates kind of the, the, the light coming through, and that was what I was trying to focus on. But you know, something told me to you know continue on with the project. If I'm focusing on the environment, then what would be the next step for some project like this? And I decided to encrust the uh, outer surface like a crustacean's hard shell. Uh, where does that idea come from? You know, sometimes you ask that question, but you want to know the answer. But <laughs> I'll let you. I want to back up a little bit. Um, you know, when 911 happened, our lives uh, forever changed. And in any body of my own work, uh, there's always a reference to that tragedy in some form. I just can't escape it. And, and that's another uh, reflection of the duality in this instance is the, you know, the Twin Tower uh, tragedy. And after the event, I don't know if you like me or not, but I watch all the documentaries and configuring about what exactly happened. And I remember learning about the Twin Towers infrastructure and exterior tube within a tube architecture. Uh, the, this especially reinforced perimeter wall is meant to resist all the lateral, lateral loading and the gravity loading. Uh, and I'm just very curious about that outside support skin. But to bridge the starkness of the contrasting materials, I chose to apply a golden mountain leaf in the interior. This gold is a reference to the big picture behind, 9 -1, behind the 911 attack and subsequent global maelstrom, that of inequitable distribution of resources. I have two amazing friends who have traveled, studied, and made a documentary about the situation in Suriname, uh, off the northeast coast of South America, as you know. These two integrate, they interweave, uh, tools of science, apply, they apply the social, uh, theories of social development and creativity of cinema to documentaries that are giving indigenous people a global voice. For example, where large western corporations have ravaged indigenous people's lands, goal well, in this instance, they leave behind a ruined land. It becomes impossible for those tribes to live healthfully or even make a living out that the land, soil, and water resources have been so ruined. It's all, you know, very heartbreaking. 
So here's an example of the fragility and beauty of Earth. Gold is so luminous and so beautiful, but you know, quite, what price is it mine? So these sort of dichotomies abound in my work. Another characteristic is that I express myself through a constructive method. As I explore methods, I bind, I embed your stones in porcelain, I carve, I bond, I weave, I meld, I melt, I blend, I join, I bridge materials. You know, I really have to integrate the parts to create a whole. That's just my mode of operation. So when you look at the parts, like down below here in the mezzanine level, thanks again down there, it's like I'm in a baseball stadium or something. Um, there are some bamboo paste pieces that look like they've been made out of hundreds of bamboo coins. Um, there's one called Squell and one is called Playing with Glass. Um, or like way in the very far back corner, um, there are a couple of pieces called wing porcelain pieces. So you kind of get the gist of, of my process, I think. Now the paper porcelain, and Catherine, are you ready for your big, your big moment? Or no. Yeah. Okay. They have these uh, noisy little plastic bags that I actually want to pass around while I'm talking about paper porcelain. I don't know if any of you have had experience with this material, but they're actually passing around regular porcelain, which is just a high grade, beautiful material. It's soft and translucent when it's fired. And then the other one is uh, of the paper. And I want to tell you a little bit about this process. It's very labor intensive, of course, especially if you don't want a pub mail. I shredded all my junk mail and journal pages. You know, it's a way to move on. Uh, and I let that steep for weeks in water. I wedged up a high fire porcelain by rolling it out very thin to dry. And then I pulverized the dry clay, swinging a hammer with uh, the clay bits inside the pillowcase. Um, and then I blended that paper pulp with the dry clay, and I got to wedging some more. So what's going around is you can kind of feel the difference in the texture compared to the regular porcelain. And then there's fragile globe here is another way that I use uh, bandaging material and uh, hydrocal. And then I encrusted it with a soft white peak crystal quartz like texture, silica to be exact. You know, silica is a really common ingredient in glazes and clay bodies. The, the cotton bandaging gauze serves as a structural stabilizer for sure for this, but also represents my wish for healing of the planet. And I hope that melting of those materials provide a, a delicacy, a light touch. It's something I'm really trying to take into my work is more of a light touch. So there's that sense of fragility and expressing a feeling I have about our globe. Now the very back, um, um, by Miss Jennifer Boyden there. Those are called Purple Heart 1 and 2. And it's also an example of how I feel about a globe and how I seem compelled to capture duality. You can kind of turn around and walk back that way if you want. I don't know if that's the same. Um, anyway, working in this format is a way I have of dealing with the conundrums and contrast, you know, the yin and yang of life. What was going on for me at that time was a crescendo of concern and frustration regarding our country being at war. I'm very bothered at a very deep level of the destruction caused by war. People's lives, people's futures, property, resources, culture, diplomacy, and so on, you know the list. I can go to a very negative space with the heaviness I feel about this ill will, so prevalent to humankind, of course it's gone throughout history. So to balance this heaviness, I work to convey a sense of beauty and brightness regarding the sacrifice so many make in times of war. So receiving the Purple Heart in our country is a badge of honor, a price is paid for service, and the duality here is a contrast between the devastation of war and the beauty of the honor of service. So these pastels are a statement of patriotism and recognition of the conundrums that abound in war for any country, for any people. All right, so I hope you've seen a few pieces that made you delight your eye. Maybe you can relate to my perspective, ideas, processes, and compositions. I see my job as an artist to be one that provides a viewer with a visual experience that might evoke thought and emotion, or at least to come away with the experience of feeling of enthused and infused. And let me wrap up by inviting you to a panel discussion about this exhibition a month from now. The next first Friday, I've got Linda Andrews, a writer, Don Forbes, an artist, and Michelle Hartman, a scientist. And they're going to be giving their responses to some of the materials and the uh, pieces here. So thank you for standing, listening to me, say what I need to say.